Victory Lane and Dave Burns. We were ready for him and his crew was ready for him too. High fives all around for Greg, who seemed to be battling two issues during the day that slowed the car down. Brakes and then questionable fuel mileage at the end there, Greg. Were you holding back on both accounts till the end? Yeah, I was. Uh, this Turbo HD Ford really wanted to go, but uh, I was holding back at the end there, the middle part of that run. And then we got those cautions, thankful that's what my, my plan was inside the car. And close us up to Jimmy Johnson to give me a shot at him. And I was a little better than him on that short run. Uh, he was a little bit loose, and I knew it. But, uh, you know, I just want to say we're thanking all the fans and, you know, going through that Hurricane Ike and all that. And just want to thank everybody, 3M and, and Dish Network, everybody, Jackson, who supported us this year. Kansas has been a while ago. Describe the feelings of finally being back in victory lane. I'm telling you what, I can't describe it. It just... Uh, you know, I needed a lot of help to get here, and, uh, you know, all these guys behind me in the engine department, everybody's just giving me so much uh, help and support. All my friends and family at home just uh, keep telling us we can do it, you can do it. And uh, one other guy that's not here that told me we can do it, and I'm going to try. Not many people pick you to kick off this chase as a, as a contender. The horse rode today, didn't it? Did Greg Biffle, emotional in victory lane. It's been a long time, Jamie. Looks great with the checkers. Great job for Greg Biffle. Jimmy Johnson finishes second. Looked to be the runaway winner today, and then Biffle just pulled one on you, Jimmy. Did that surprise you there? You know, on, on long runs, we've been very, very strong all day long. The short, short runs is what, what hurt me the most. Uh, we freed the car up because of all the long runs that we had on the run before, and I felt a little vulnerable, and sure enough, um, he got by, and I was inching back up to him, but I just didn't have enough laps at the end there. Uh, but he did a great job. I'm very proud of the team, the day that we've had. Uh, it could be a lot worse. I could be the 18 or the 20 or some of those guys that had bad luck. So uh, and victory lane would have been great for uh, for this race team and all of those employee owners, but second's not a bad thing either. You were looking at the points. You're tied right now with Carl Edwards for first. How do you think this chase is going to shape up as far as how close you guys are going to be to the end? I'm preparing for the worst. I'm preparing for it to be close, but we just don't know until we get about halfway through this and see where everybody's at. All right, Jimmy Johnson finished a second. Shannon? All right, third place finish for your points leader, Carl Edwards. How does that sound? That sounds great. Uh, first off, on a personal note, got to say happy birthday to Melanie. She's 13. And um, our thoughts and prayers are with the Golich family. One of my great friends, Dean Golich, lost his father this week. And uh, it was really good to have a good run in, uh, in light of that. But uh, my guys did awesome. I mean, everything worked. Them. Vitamin water even tastes good right now. You know, um, just cool to be leading the points. Awesome for Greg Biffle. Great for Office Depot, Ford, Affleck, everybody. You guys really struggled in practice this weekend. Are you surprised how good that car was once that green flag dropped? Yeah, that's why it sounds like I'm in victory lane here. I'm pumped. Um, it just wasn't any good in practice. Bob Osborne, he, uh, he did a great job coming up with a setup. Four springs, shocks, track bar, front bar, all that stuff. And he showed me the sheet this morning, and I said, man, I hope it works, and it did. Yep, only one top ten before today for Carl Edwards. Doc? A dead heat atop the point standings. We were talking about how good this chase is going to be in 2008. I got to believe we may get to Homestead with a half a dozen or more guys that can win this championship. Carl Edwards, Jimmy Johnson tied the big uh, winner today. Greg Biffle up six spots. The losers, uh, Bush and Boyer, back seven and back four. Kyle Bush finishing a disappointing uh, 34th today. Let's go down and visit with Jeff Burton. Jamie. And Jeff Burton just getting a little drink here. Long day. Take us through your run, Jeff. Finishing fourth. Yeah, we had a good solid run. We weren't, uh, we didn't have the fastest car, you know, most of the day. But we had a fastest car every now and then, and and uh, kept ourselves in, in position, ran top five all day. And you know, that's kind of runs that we we need to get back to having. I feel like we can. I really do. I feel like our best stuff's coming, and and uh, it's a good solid day for us. We uh, the main thing is we ran well. You know, if we ran well and finished 30th, so be it. Um, but you know, we we ran well, and when you run well, good things can happen. A lot of hard racing up front. You and Junior racing each other hard, sweating. How hard is it getting in the chase now, knowing what's at stake? Well, I mean, this is what it's all about. I mean, it's playoff time now, and it's, uh, you know, 10 to go, 20 to go, 30 to go. It's, it's every man for himself. I mean, within within limits, obviously. And, and Dale and I had a great race. You know, we, we uh, never touched each other. We raced each other hard. And that's what, you know, that's what it's supposed to be. I mean, it's supposed to be good, hard racing. And uh, I think you got nine more races of that coming. All right. He's had a smile on his face, Shannon. What a long day. Yeah, definitely another great run for Dale Earnhardt Jr. In this 88 team. I got to ask you about that hard racing with Jeff Burton, though. When you guys are both going for a championship, how difficult is it to race hard like that, knowing that you have to come off with a good finish? Well, I mean, we, we don't want to wreck each other. I don't want to hit Jeff. I like him. And uh, I thought I had him, and, and when he got, I slipped a little bit. He got back by me. But it's just great, great racing, fun. I hate lost the spot, though, because it's important. Everyone's important, but it's fun. He's a good racer. 
he's hard to beat, man. He's just smooth. Now you got one set of tires in that race, Dale, that you did not like at all. Are you surprised at how just one set can totally change that entire car? Mm -hmm. No. Seems to be uh, happening to a lot of us, but I don't know, man. We just put on a set. The car was awesome. We're leading the race. We're, we're fastest car on the track. And we put on a set of tires and lost, we fell all the way to 10th or whatever. I mean, you know, where are you going to point your finger other than the racing tire we just put on the car? But we put on another set. We're fine. You know, we went back to good and we were just lost all that track position. It's too, you know, too short a race. But I was, one thing I am happy about is uh, my guys got me a lot of spots back on pit road that I lost. So it's really, really hard to gain spots on pit road, and they gained a bunch today. So I want to thank them for that. And it certainly was a great day for those over-the-wall guys on the 88. Mike? And a solid day for Denny Hamlin as well. Top 10, finishing ninth. In the grand scheme of things, how good a day was this? It was an okay day. Um, you know, we ran really well. We ran in the top three, four cars for the most of the day. It's just, you know, we were uh, one of those guys that had fit for fuel. We just couldn't make it. Um, you can't, in the sport, you really can't uh, count on there being caution laps or anything like that. You can't count on that stuff, but we were fine on fuel, but uh, we had that debris caution that I don't know where the debris was, but uh, it just, they, they threw it in the middle of, you know, some people's pit window, some people couldn't make it, some people could, so it, it burned us. It, it burned us pretty pretty bad, but uh, it still was a good day. I mean, some other guys had tr some troubles, and um, our FedEx Express team was good. We just had great pit stops, and um, just wasn't our day as far as fuel mileage. I saw you debriefing with your crew chief, Mike Ford. Looking forward, what were you guys discussing that might help you get better as we uh, play out these final nine races? i got to figure out what I need to do as a driver to, to get better fuel mileage. Uh, you know, it seems like our teammates can get better than us. Um, you know, week in, week out, they're two, three tenths uh, better on fuel mileage than what we are. So I've got to figure out as a driver what I need to do to change my style to, to get better fuel mileage. Danny Hamlin still in the big picture. Pretty good day. He's up to sixth in the standings, Alan. All right, Mike, thanks. So race one of the 2008 chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup has been won by Greg Biffle and Rusty. You're not surprised by that. I'm really not surprised by it. We've been seeing him coming on a lot lately, guys. He's been running really well. So to get his first victory of the year, that's pretty cool. But the guy I was surprised about, Kyle Busch. Oh, yeah. Man, 12 laps down, a big crash. We didn't see that one coming. Yeah, the story of the day was the championship leader coming in, had a mechanical problem on his car early before they could really get it fully repaired. It got away. Well, I'll tell you, he gave away all 80 of those bonus points in one afternoon. It's just that he's got to be sick to his stomach. We go to Dover next. I bet he can't wait to get to Dover next year, next week, and try to pick up those points again. That is a bad feeling. Kyle earned those points by winning races all mm. season long, and now he finds himself way back eighth in the championship. And the other story of the day, as far as championship guys are concerned, Matt Kenseth just in the wrong place at the wrong time. Well, he really was. I mean, the 45 car and him got together and into the wall. And, you know, we saw this thing the same, same place, same time, basically, last week in turn one and turn that area down there uh, at Richmond, Virginia. Wiped out with another car, got the car tore all up big time. And we just don't generally see that out of Matt Kenseth. Yeah, McCombie gets it to him and turns him, and David Gillen hits him right in the door. I'm glad to see Matt's okay. But, boy, what a disastrous day for Matt Kenseth. So those drivers need to go to Dover next week and, for that matter, all the rest of the races and have great finish and see how the rest of this unfolds. And as far as Greg Biffle, Doc, he started off the best way he possibly could have. Finally getting back in the chase for only the second time in his career. I mentioned at the top of the day, the last time Greg Biffle was in a chase was 2005, and he ended up uh, finishing second in the points, just 35 points behind Tony Stewart. Came that close to becoming a Cup Series champion. Yeah, a great day for him, and I think it's pretty cool. Biff told us he was sitting there just waiting for his chance, saving a little bit of fuel during that run. He got the cautions that he needed, and then he was able to make the pass. And he pounced on those guys. And I'll tell you what I'm impressed by. How about Dale Earnhardt Jr.? A great race. He's proven that he's going to be a championship contender, too. He closed up his point gap from the leader in this race, and... Uh, you know, he's sitting there and only 50 points back. And we finally saw Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car go away, and he did some things, and it finally came back, which is not something we've seen uh, recently until last week at Richmond. They finally were able to get this car back and make him competitive in the late laps. This is his first chase in a Hendrick car, and these guys have shown that they're really poised for this kind of this time of year. And, uh, boy, how about Jack Roush here? He looks happy, doesn't he? <laughs> Remember, it was a Jack Roush car that won at Dover last year in the chase. It was Carl Edwards who got the win, but today the celebration is ongoing there in victory. And let's check in uh, with Mike. He's got Steve Addington, the Kyle Busch crew chief. Yeah, we're catching up with him. You can see the disappointment on his face. Uh, Steve, how would you describe this day? Uh, not very good if you watch what I watched. We well, had a part failure. That's 
one of those things you can't do nothing about. And uh, we weren't very good at when we unloaded here, but I felt like we did the right things and we had, we're going to have a good race car and part failure cost us. So uh, we'll just have to go back and reevaluate. And they've got nine races to regroup, Alan. Yeah, Kyle Busch's team finds themselves now 74 points in the hole after starting the day 80 points ahead of a number of the drivers in this chase for the championship. And it is on to Dover, the Monster Mile next week. Great racetrack, should be a great race. Uh, it's a wonderful racetrack. You talk about eating up parts now, the Monster yeah. Mile will flat tear a car up. So if they had a problem here, wait till next week.